Hello beautiful Geminis, welcome to the channel if you're new and welcome back to all my beautiful, lovely, supportive subscribers and viewers. Thank you so much for being here. So let's look and see, we've pre-shuffled this deck, but look at what fell out, Three of Wands. That is always significant to the reading, so I'm going to put that card right there. As I continue to shuffle a bit, Three of Wands is, your ships have arrived in the harbor in love. So Tiki Torches, Starry Nights, Adventure, Excitement, Deep Emotion. I love that card, okay. Very good artist here on this deck of the Light Series Tarot. Bottom of the deck, High Priestess, you're keeping something to yourself. You're keeping your own wise counsel, Gemini. There is something that is very troubling it does look like a truth has come out and you realize that somebody was probably very unfair to you in their seeking of the security they felt they could have with you. The passion is off the charts. The person has fire in their belly, but you know, we know that the devil card is usually, the energy typically means somebody is very controlling in an unhealthy way because control is always unhealthy for the most part. All right, so let's take a look and see what your mutual energy was in the recent past before we clarify, because the truth and the detail is all in the clarification. So let's see your mutual energy in the past is the Page of Pentacles. You know, staying realistic, I would say, especially early in a relationship. But the Page of Pentacles is day-to-day, -day, taking care of the details, very Virgo energy. If you take care of the little details, oftentimes the rest works, works itself out. I like the energy, really. Uh, I get the Justice card. Really trying to stay balanced. Justice is a wonderful card in a reading because it's the seventh house of marriage. It's Libra energy. It really speaks very largely to staying very balanced and really looking at the relationship as a long-term potential. So it, it says with a Libra energy that both of you are very serious about love coming into this energy. Venus and Saturn rule Libra in the seventh house, and that's how you get to a marriage or a committed relationship. Your person right now in this energy, excuse me, I need to pull that card because that was the one that was actually pulled first. Your person is very, very much in the energy of temperance. They want things to work out. It's Sagittarius energy. It's being very philosophical about the relationship. It's ninth house on the astrology wheel. It is the energy of staying calm, cool, collected. We have a guardian angel here because that is a spiritual energy. Sagittarius has a spiritual core to their nature in terms of trying to do the right thing. All right. They view you as somebody who is really bored. <laughs> They view you as having sort of your back turned to them that, you know, you've given three cups of love and it's almost as though you feel as though they didn't really accept what you brought to the table, but you are feeling in their viewpoint, how they view you, not necessarily reality because you're over here. Um, but what we're seeing here is that your person thinks that you've really, you're kind of fed up with them, that you're just not having it. You're not into it. So, the way, okay, in their heart space, ooh, Seven of Swords, that wanted to come out during the shuffle, the pre-shuffle, before the reading. The Seven of Swords reversed is truths are revealed. Nothing is hidden anymore. So, Seven of Swords as an energy, as an Aquarius energy, it's a pretty detached energy. So, in the heart space, it really speaks to the fact that your person is feeling out of sorts, but good. I like this energy. The Seven of Swords upright means that they're sneaky deaky. I call it the sneaky Pete card or the, the, the sneaky Petunia card, whatever, girl, male, female, it doesn't matter. But that energy reverse means that this person is finally coming to grips with some of their habits that have really really, you know, altered the behavior of what they should have had coming into a love relationship, a dishonesty level that they're trying to reverse. The Eight of Wands, this is beautiful Sagittarius energy. Again, it really speaks to the fact that your person sees the two of you moving forward very rapidly. 
Now it's interesting. That's they have fire in their belly. They're very passionate. They want to move forward quickly. They want to travel. If you're at a distance, it can represent airfare, but it also can indicate eight wands being quite literal can mean making love all night long, being really passionate, being really into the physicality, being into the excitement, the liveliness, the intellect, the communication. You could send this person a sexy text and they all of a sudden they were busy. And then now that, that you've sent them the sexy text, they're all of a sudden they're free after dinner to see you or before dinner. The mutual energy in the relationship is both of you felt feel that the relationship is so heavy that there's a sense that it you need to release it if you haven't already. I would say that the readings we do here on YouTube are not meant to tell you what you already know. They are meant to predict future. So I will say that just because this doesn't fit right now doesn't mean it won't in a week because the nature of this is predictive work. All right, Nine of Swords Energy says, Spirit is actually advising you to really think this through, that this may not, if you go forward in this relationship, you may have remorse and regret. You may have remorse and regret because the relationship has already ended or you're at an impasse with this person. So spirit is saying, use your Gemini intellect. You should be all up in your head. You know that this person has brought a lot of negative energy into your life and that you have a dove here of peacefulness. So at the end of the day, you need to, to choose to pay attention to the red flags is how I'm reading that. The outcome at this time period, this time frame, is the Pisces moon, okay? Pisces energy moon card. It really says that the relationship itself is underwater, that your outcome is very uncertain, that you feel, you feel really a bit unraveled because it's 12th house energy, um, and it, Pisces energy is the things that undo us, unravel us. And we can see she's unraveled because she feels like she's drowning here. Because again, it's like she can see the moon, but the moon is not giving her any answers. So when we get the Seven of Swords energy, the Nine of Swords energy, it really shows that there is a situation here in your love life with whomever you came to ask about that has been so heavy and so burdensome for you and yet it had brilliant moments brilliant aspects you thought you would have a future with this person so let's go ahead and dig into the details here for you of this reading because this is a very complex reading let's look why do we have the page of pentacles here it looks like you've made plans in the recent past to do something go to a movie have coffee it doesn't look like a big date but it looks as though you saw this person okay let's see ten of swords reversed okay trying to come back in relationship after there was an emotional betrayal of some sort and a walking away and look at this again seven nine ten Okay, so the only thing missing here is the eight to bridge the gap, and that's you holding back. All right, the king of swords energy reversed. Your person's, the king of swords upright is detached. When we look at the king of swords reversed, we look at somebody who's really digging in, who's digging in saying, you know, I just can't really do this, so I'll just do a little thing because I can't really manifest something bigger. The King of Swords reversed is, is exceedingly challenging, if not someone who's so deeply embedded in their head that they can't really, they're out of touch with their emotions. We get the Two of Cups reversed for you here with the Justice card. Two of Cups reversed means there's no fairness in a love relationship. The Ten of Pentacles reversed says that your person is just trying to maintain cool, calm, collected. This is a reconciliation card, okay? But when I get this, what I'm really getting here for you, Gemini, is that most likely you were dating somebody who said they were getting a divorce and they didn't really get the divorce and they didn't tell you the truth and they wanted the passion and they kind of tricked you. So that's kind of the storyline, but it doesn't have to be. But when we get the Ten of Coins reversed, a legacy marriage is something you're not going to have with this person. There's no abundance. There's no wealth. There's no, there's no sense of um, teamwork here is what I'm getting. 
it looks like you're really disengaged here. Four of Cups, you're like, I just think it's like the, oh, she's so over me card, or he's so over me. And I would say that with the Queen of Pentacles reversed, you're feeling very much as though there's nothing you can do about it. At the end of the day, the Queen of Pentacles upright is all about taking care of business, building a life. It's the, it's, you know, the Ten of Pentacles foundation gives the Queen her goal. This is her goal. And now that it's reversed, this is reversed. Your attitude is, you know what, if I can't build something of value, what is the purpose of any of this? And that's how you feel. The Seven of Swords reversed where your person wants to tell you the truth now, interestingly enough. Why is it here? Ah, there's that. Uh, there's the Eight of Swords I just said was missing. So we have the Seven, the Eight, the Nine. Okay, and the King of Swords and the Ten of Swords. Okay, so your person now is still holding back on telling you the truth. Okay, so you know they're really all up in their head and they're coming across really coldly that's a person who just doesn't answer your texts that's a person who just you know and it's so obvious you know it's like really rubbing your face in it kind of that they're holding back and refraining that they don't want you to know about their life so it's really it's very tough energy so let's see why why are they so passionate about you because they're sure not giving you what you need. We have the Five of Wands. Now that, I need another clarifier because that went flying out of the deck and I don't even know whether it's a reversal or not. The Five of Wands energy though says that they're conflicted about the passion. That they, they're very ego driven. That's Leo energy. They're very ego driven and they really start a lot of conflict with you. That part of their sex drive gets sublimated when they can't express it. And that becomes that Mars energy that's the passionate energy um, with Jupiter, which is supposed to be good fortune, is really this energy that just when they when they feel basically passionate without release they get really, really very difficult to deal with. Very ego-driven. You know, you don't really want me. I'm really mad. I'm going to misbehave. Okay. But, well, you're the Queen of Pentacles here. I mean, not the Queen of Pentacles. You're the Nine of Pentacles because the Queen of Pentacles is not possible with this person by virtue of decisions being made, okay? Lack of action. So they see you as their wish, you know, wish fulfillment, Nine of Pentacles. You bring everything to the table. You look good. There's everything about you that's desirable. You're very independent. You don't need them. And that really makes them feel conflicted. So the better you are on your own, the more upset they feel, the more they sabotage the relationship, and the more they hold back. Interesting reading, right? Like, why wouldn't you want a partner who's very successful? All right, so the death card is reversed here. We do get no birth birth or rebirth. I get 10 of wands energy. This is mutual energy though. It does show you packing it in, walking away. You know, that's what's hidden in the energy. Now it doesn't mean you've done it yet because it's, it's the hidden energy. For some of you, you did. It can even mean a move to a very distant place which then precludes a rebirth, okay? So there we go again, another card off my hand onto the floor. I just feel like the thing with the floor today is it's almost like you have to sweep up the mess that's been made here. The chariot card, spirit says, move forward. Oh my God, okay, I've never gotten that combination. Spirit is just saying, move forward very rapidly and leave the situation alone. That is a stunning reading. Basically, what we're seeing over here, the high priestess is alone with, you know, your ships are coming in, but your ship that's arrived in the harbor is you, Gemini. You are basically your own salvation. That at the end of the day, you bring more to the table for yourself than anybody else does presently. We get your person is very much focused on themselves very much um you know but we see your person as self-focused and really just again not communicating with you 
the uh, moon card and the sun card. Well, that's yin yang energy also. They actually fit together because the sun and the moon conjunction is a marriage. In astrology, it's usually a long lasting marriage. But what I'm getting here is that both of you are happy on your own. And yet together, your energy here is a moon card, which leaves you both feeling very uncertain. Four of Wands. Wow. Okay. So for some of you, you might have been married to this person, but both of you want a relationship in which there's deep love with that Queen of Cups. So this, these are your outcome cards, though. It does show that regardless of how strange this reading is and how even though Spirit is telling you sort of run, forest, run, um, you know, it really is saying that you should probably let this go. At the end of the day, we have three queens here. That's really an unusual reading also, but we have all four queens on the board. So it really means that you need to be very balanced. You need to take in practical considerations where you're at right now. You need to be passionate and, and optimistic about a future. So right now, it looks as though the two of you are really considering almost like sumo wrestlers you know when sumo wrestlers start the match they kind of go around looking at each other sizing each other up you know before they kind of meet and start to grapple that's what this looks like to me so this is and a very odd reading it's probably not going to resonate with everybody but i'm really getting that emotionally i think most of you are in this place whether that's the storyline or not emotionally you're feeling really, I think, despondent, not overly optimistic, feeling like, you know, you need to take good care of yourself, and you absolutely do. It does show that you have happiness as your outcome, though, with the Queen of Wands. So regardless of what's happening with this relationship, interestingly enough, you're very solid. Both of you are solid in your own ways. You're both wanting to cut out anything that doesn't serve you. You both love each other. There's still a lot of passion for each other. So it looks as though the question here that I'm seeing in this reading is one of compatibility. Compatible viewpoints, compatible, you know, everything. Just really about compatibility. Because you do have yin-yang energy. You do have a great deal of love. But you have to be really practical because sometimes we fall in love with people that there's just no getting along with them or there's never any meeting of the minds to move forward in a very solid way in which you can build something. Love Oracle messages are strictly sexual. Interesting card, isn't it? Given all of this energy. Strictly sexual. This connection is passionate but not enduring. Okay, interesting when Oracle cards confirm the tarot. Past life love, your soul remembers this very intense connection. Let's look at the Moonology deck and see what we have going on with that. What is Moon? Because this Moon is such a part of the reading. What do we need to know about the Moon card? You are good enough, Full Moon and Virgo. So some of what's making you open to reuniting with this person is that you may have, you may be suffering from a sense of if they don't love you the way you want to be loved, the way you need to be loved, you may be internalizing that energy in a way that's not helpful to you because you're insecure, maybe even if it's not on the, even if it's hidden that you're insecure. I think that if that resonates with you, you're going to know that. So let's look and see what the shaman's dream oracle has for advice. I love the Shaman's Dream Oracle because it is about healing. When we have a reading like this, I think we definitely need to have a very grounded feeling that life is wonderful, that it's optimistic, that you still can manifest what you want. Radical acceptance of your person as they are is what is required here. Radical acceptance. So if you cannot, if you have any thought or feeling that you want to change this person, it is not going to be very helpful to you in your life. You would have to do what we would call settling in some ways for something that may not serve you. 
because you love this person so much. But the Queen of Swords ultimately will make that choice. So I'm going to leave it there for you, Gemini. It was a joy reading for you. Please leave comments below as to whether this resonated with you. And I thank you again so much for your viewership. Thank you. Bye-bye.